Alrighty. Howdy, neighbors, and welcome back to the Divine Speaker. Last time, we got to know a little more about Leos. We found out what his, um, judgment was, which was he was going to be a killer. Good for him. And then we found out how Ilron and Varys met. They got that whole backstory. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> I'm telling you, he could sleep through anything. Leos didn't respond from his room either. Well, yeah, but that's normal for him. Aren't you worried about rain? Yeah. Luckily, I got this. How did you manage to get a key? Aaron gave me the spares when I booked the rooms. I hate that. Oh, no. I thought I opened the sound of the door being unlocked and footsteps approaching. Huh? Sign? Fun? Oh my, oh my. What do we have here? <laughs> what? Mm. You two just couldn't keep your hands off each other, <laughs> could you? What? Turned to where they were staring beside me to see Leo's fast asleep at my side. I still shut tight. Mm -hmm. It really was to be expected. What's more erotic than an assassin after your life, after all? Maybe let's not say that. Uh, wait, wait, this isn't what it looks like. Our rain really has grown up so fast. He even recognizes what it looks like now. Oh, brings a tear to my eye. Mm, what's with all the noise? <sighs> Go away. Oh, Leos, your maid is here to serve you <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Tie in a hole. What? I don't... I don't have a... His eyes finally opened and he is sat bolt upright, running inside his direction before glancing at the side of me. Uh... Um, really, he was just... keeping watch. Sure. Now, if you two are finally awake, come meet us outside already. Oh, go on ahead. One turn to leave, sign skipping along behind him a moment later. <sighs> Sorry. What for? They're the ones who barged in. I don't think whatever they want. He straightened out his clothes and left the room ahead of me, leaving me to sit alone in bed. Where he was laying to most go still filled warm under my palm. For some reason I found myself gripping at the sheets alone. No, they're waiting for me outside. There's no point in moping in here. When we got to bed, I straightened out my clothes and headed for the door. Man... I can't believe Rain had Fawn and I here, and he still chose you. I have no clue what you're talking about. Two guys ready to throw themselves at his feet whenever he wanted, and the uninterested one gets him. Boo. <laughs> I seriously have no clue what you're buzzing around me for. Isn't it obvious? Obviously not. You obviously have a thing for each other. A thing? What thing? Do I really have to spell it out to you? You guys were in bed together, right? And? Then surely you must have messed around a little. <laughs> As I left the building, I was faced with a bright red Leos, flailing his arms around in anger, trying to scare Sign, which is laughing in return. What are you talking about? No, no, of course not. <sighs> Good morning, everyone. Morning, Rain. Finally! Oh, I was getting so lonely without you. Um... Leaving Leos behind, Sign came forward and wrapped his arms around my waist, hugging me tightly. Leos was bullying me, you know? I don't know why you like him. I wasn't bullying anyone. Boo-hoo! I'm so upset! Please stop talking. He turned around and smiled at Leos with a wink. You little... <laughs> Somebody's a little jealous. There's no need to fight. Let's fill them in on what happened last night. Did you find anything out? I ran into a man named Hone who says he knows Caspian. He's going to meet us at his shop today. Oh, Ilron's coming too. Wow, it does sound like you had an eventful night. I hope you at least managed to fit in a dance. <laughs> uh, uh... Whoa, no way! You actually danced together? Damn, I would have paid anything to see that. 
But more importantly, this finally sounds like it could be it. He feels so close now. What are you waiting for then? Come on, let's go already! If you want to go already, then stop clinging to him. Why? Maybe we could walk hand in hand. <sighs> Whoa, no need to glare daggers. Okay, okay. I'll back away from your man. He's not my... Oh, forget it. He walked away from us in a half, leaving footprints in the snow. Sign giggled and chased after him, leaving me alone with Fawn. Um, Rain, I was wondering, would you like to look around the town later? Since we didn't get to go together earlier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, I said he was going to disappear later today to talk with Elron. I don't want to leave him alone. Actually, I was kind of planning to do something with Leo Slater. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, sorry. Maybe another time? Don't worry about it. Wait, Fawn! I could say anything else. He'd already left to follow up after the other two. I rushed to catch up. It wasn't time to hear a sign teasing Leo Slater again, yet again. Really annoyed, I took my place beside Laos, let Sina fall back to walk alongside Fawn. What took you so long? Nothing. I'm here now, aren't I? Finally, we walked up to the sign, Horn's Bakery, swinging in the wind. A group left the store, carrying paper bags and overflowing with bread and pastries. They giggled and chatted excitedly. This must be it. Shall we? It's still early, but better waiting in there than out here. <laughs> Hmm. You know, I just remembered I had something come up. Fawn, why don't you accompany me? Me? What is it? Something really important. Come on, I'll tell you on the way. Uh, okay. Bye. We'll catch up with you two later. Try not to have too much fun. Bye. Santa took hold of Fawn's sleeve and led him away from us. What was that about? Who knows? Without another word, Laos held the door open for me and we entered. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's kind of cute though. We were greeted with the smell of freshly baked bread and began mouth water. The bakery was mostly empty except for one customer who stood by the corner waiting for his food to be bagged. He had a small frame with white hair with pink tips. His clothes were fancy, as to be expected, and had a beautiful flower pattern. Around the counter, Hone finished the customer's order, finished the customer's food, and he turned around to leave. His eyes met mine, but neither of us said a word. Big red eyes, wide and innocent, in contrast to the mask that took up most of his face, dark and imposing. Rain, and, uh, have we met? You're here earlier than I thought you would be. Uh, I'm sorry. I hope we're not causing too much trouble. Ah, uh, and this is Leos, by the way. <laughs> not at all. Please, sit down. Did you find me easily? And Leos, it's good to meet you. We didn't have any trouble. We all sat down at one of the tables. Home sitting across from the two of us. We exchanged pleasantries and chatted lightly for a moment, before turning to the matter at hand. So, you really know Caspian? He nodded, a slight smile on his face. He's been a regular of mine for years. The tall one with the brown hair, right? I'm not surprised you're asking about him. Are you after some of his woodwork? He's a skilled carpenter, and he owns a small store not that far from here. Prince of Aurelia Cavella. A simple carpenter. Is this really the right guy? Are you serious? Fine, sure, we're in desperate need of a new table. Now can you point us in the right direction? <laughs> I can, no problem. Suddenly the front door swung open and three people stepped in. Two I knew well and one I'd never seen before, with long pink hair. Varys, Silron! Oh, it's great to see you guys again. And this is? I sat down at the table and Hone quickly stood up and flipped the sign on the door to show that they were closed. Oh gods, please give me the strength to get through this. I'm so sorry, Leos. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Leos, did you miss me? 
No, not at all. Not even slightly. I can't even begin to explain how much I didn't miss you. <laughs> Still playing hard to get, I see. Well, I missed you. Well, I think I'm needed in the kitchen for a moment. I'll fill you in with the details later, Rain. He wavered at the unknown man, who simply nodded. They obviously already knew each other. Let me introduce you to a good friend of mine. I like to call him Zarin. That's my name, you fool. Well, yeah, that's why I like to call you it. Makes sense when you think about it. Wow, what a funny joke. How long you been thinking about that one? <laughs> a week. <laughs> Give or take a few days. <sighs> Rain, I take it. And you are? Leos. Leos, right. The one that came from Aurelia Cavella. Leos glared at Euron, who just shrugged in response. I suppose some introduction will be necessary. First and foremost, I'm the royal physician to his highness, the lord of Sidkaeum. But this position allows me certain... freedoms. Freedoms to research to my heart's content. I spend most of my time attending to scholarly duties, and I consider myself an expert in theology and demonology. Of course, this is heavily frowned upon, so... I expect this to be kept between us. Certainly. I don't intend to tell anyone. Theology and demonology. Huh? Zarin here has been researching demons and gods for a very long time, so we couldn't think of a single other person who may be able to help Nox and Soren more. Quite. Normally, I wouldn't agree to something like this, but unfortunately, due to my acquaintanceship with a certain someone, I had little choice. Iron Grin, leaning back in his chair with his arms crossed over his chest. Who would have guessed? How is he doing? Has he woken up yet? No, not yet. He's stable, but asleep. I've only begun preliminary testing, but nothing is out of the ordinary. Vitals are within healthy ranges, breathing is normal. He has no internal injuries, he's just stuck in a slumber. Could I awaken him? Possibly, but I won't try until I can find a way to separate the demon from him. Is something like that even possible? Hmm, I don't want to get your hopes up. I've never seen anything like them, two beings so closely melded together at the seams. Even if I can separate them, Will they ever be the same? I don't know. Not yet. <sighs> However, all is not lost. I'm just not in the habit of pretending everything will work out when there's obvious risks. I have Soren in my lab, and I'll keep him there until I can ascertain the nature of their joining and find a way to separate their souls. I don't know how long it will take. I couldn't give you an estimate even if I wanted to, but they're both safe with me. I can't thank you enough. I might not have known Soren for that long, but, but I wanted to save him. Turns out that wanting to save someone doesn't mean you can. So I'm entrusting him to you. Have you ever dealt with a demon like this before? Nothing quite like him. I can't say I've ever held one in my lab either. However, I'll only be in danger if he awakens, and it doesn't seem like that will be anytime soon. Right, well, I honestly couldn't care less about what happens to him. He must have me out of the corner of his eye. But, uh, for his sake, I hope you'll be able to help him. Leos. I must have swallow hard. Someone like him to care about something just because I did. Wait, er, is it? He's come with me all this way, saved my life, told me to find Caspian, without any gain. Has he been doing this for me this entire time? Oh my god, you're dumb. Oh my god, you're dumb! Before I can ask any other questions, the door suddenly swung open. The princess stepped in. It was a young man from before. Master, are you here? His eyes scanned the crowd at the table. And seeing Zarin, he hurried to his side. Ooh, he mad. Not long after, he noticed Elrond. He jumped back as if he was a cat hissing at a dog. You... You, what are you doing here? I told you to leave my master alone! Oh, look, it's the brat. What was your name again? Tidass? <laughs> Can't even spend a few moments away from your precious Zarin. Why, you? Titus, at ease. You know that I'm helping them with something at the moment. Why him of all people? He's... he's so rude and disrespectful to you. He's just a troublemaker. Don't compliment me too much. It'll go to my head. 
Is there anyone you get along with? Hmm. Does uh, Varus count? Nope. Then, nope. <laughs> <sighs> Ilron, Titus, let's calm down for a moment. We were just discussing Soren. You're helping to monitor him too, aren't you? He smiled at Titus, who seemed to instantly relax. So a fan of Varus and not of Ilron. Not difficult to imagine why. That's right. It's a weird case, you know. <sighs> I know. Allow me to make an introduction, since my dear nephew has decided to cast aside his manners. This is my assistant, Titus. He'll be watching over Soren and making sure to keep him healthy while I do my research. He nodded his head and looked toward Leos and I. <laughs> you can call me Rain. Leos, if you must. Leos, Leos. Which one were you again? Oh, uh, right, I remember the tall and uptight one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! Is that what I described him as? <laughs> oh, you just wait. <laughs> uh, it's nice to meet you, Titus. Thanks for your help with Soren. It's no problem. I'd do anything for my master. Master this, master that. Now, if we're done with talking about Soren for the moment, I'd instead speak of something else. Rain. Me? I've heard a little about you from Ilran. I won't repeat the legend since I'm sure you've heard them a thousand times before, but there hasn't been someone like you in this city for a very long time. A strange curse from a city thought to be a myth, a connection to the speaker himself. It's as if you were from a fairy tale. There's not a single person in this city who wouldn't climb over others' dead bodies to take you for themselves. You're a mystery, a hidden ace, a checkmate. You have to be careful. That's why I have layers. No one will get their hands on him as long as I live. See? Jeez, just propose already. <laughs> I can already imagine the vows. <laughs> Pipsqueak, I promise that as long as I live, no one will get their hands on you. How romantic. <laughs> oh my god. I'm glad to hear it. Sikkim <laughs> is a wonderful city, but you can't underestimate the people that live here. Well, I've done my part. I'd say I'm free of any obligation to stick around, right? We'll take our leave for now. Rain, we'll come find you again soon. Even though we've finished with our end of the bargain and delivered Soren to safety, there's still more for the two of us to discuss. But that's for a later time. There's a dark cloud over Sidkayim. I don't know what it means. Keep safe and be on the lookout, always. Now isn't the time to easily trust anyone. For the leave, Titus pulled Varus to the side, and they talked quietly for a few moments. Titus passed him a slip of paper and then let him go. I have something to speak about with Hone. Can you take over briefly? He looked toward Titus, who nodded proudly. Zarin stood from our table and entered the back room where Hon had gone, as if only natural. You two are really from Aurelia Cavella? Uh, can I ask some questions? If you have to. We are. It's deep in the forest near Stagwich. Near Stagwich? That's further away than I would have expected. What an amazing discovery! How I'd love to see the town for myself! How does a civilization grow closed off completely from the outside? Surely you do things very differently to us. I need to write this all down. He pulled out a notebook and started furiously writing, recording every word I said. Just like Zarin, I was considering himself something of an academic. And what about you? <clears throat> You're from Sikayam? He reached up and touched his mask, remaining silent. No, but nothing remains in my home to go back to. It was burnt to the ground along with a handful of other houses. People still live there, but the thing that made it my home is gone. I scratched the back of my hand awkwardly. I probably shouldn't have asked. Leos, can I ask you some questions too? Uh, what did you do in Aurelia Cavella? Not like you gave me any chance to say no, and uh, I... You find us trying to decide whether to tell the truth or not, but ultimately side and shrugged. I'm an assassin. An assassin? <laughs> That's amazing. How much use is there for an assassin in such a small town, I wonder? Plenty. Trust me. Astonishing! 
uh, let me note this down. Aren't you scared of me? Is there a bounty on my life? Uh, not that I know of. Well, then I'm not. I know people like you live in a code of honor anyway, right? You wouldn't kill someone for nothing. He has, and he will do it again. Uh, uh... Oh, I, I need to ask where you're staying. I'll come find you in my master's place if we learn anything new about Soren. The Silver Willows. It's not that far from here. Nice, nice, got it. He too is scribbling in his journal, making notes. I must feel like I'm being interrogated. If you wouldn't mind, may I take a look at your markings? Laos frowned, but remained silent. Ugh. No. We need to be smart about this now. I'd rather not. Uh, actually, I'd uh, rather not. Put my arm in a closing list in the direction the Zarn went. You need to tell me to be careful. Did that extend to him and Titus too? A smart choice. <sighs> okay, okay, I, I understand. Still, when this is all over, please let me study it. Over? You got it. You can take the rest from here, can't you? I have something to do. Oh, bye. Wait! For... It's gonna take the Iran alone, after all. <sighs> no, it's fine. Don't leave the bakery, okay? I don't like the idea of you wandering about by yourself if... if you know what is true. My dreams being followed. Okay. With no room for argument, he left the bakery behind, the bell chiming sadly as the door shut tight. <sighs> so, if I heard correctly, you're not just here to deliver Soren, are you? I'm looking for someone very important to me. Someone that may hold answers to questions that I... need to solve. I see, I see. Hmm. Yours is quite an epic tale, isn't it? Filled with excitement and despair, curses and demons, myth and legend. I'm excited to see how the story ends. In fact, I have an offer to make you. Uh oh. Just like my wonderful and perfect master, I've taken somewhat of an interest in history. You know, so much goes unrecorded and forgotten, and I'm going to do what I can to combat that. I suppose my interest more lies in the recording of present day activities that will go down in history. What are you asking? Let me tell your story one day. My story? Of all the people that were in this room a moment ago, I think I'm probably the least interesting. I agree to disagree then. Think on it. What do Laos think? Probably think it was stupid, right? <laughs> I, uh, wouldn't mind that. Actually, I'll agree if I can ask you a few questions. Shoot, I'm an open book. We got a lot of ground to cover and a little time to do it. Here we go. I know Elron. So, uh, you and Ilron. <sighs> Even his name disgusts me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really get along. Who could? He's lucky that Varus stays with him, honestly. I don't know how he does it. Did something happen between you two? Not to me, but to my master. You know why we're helping him and risking our lives in the first place beyond curiosity? It's pretty much blackmail. Blackmail? Sounds just like Ilron, yeah. I looked on an interest as Titus continued his story. That's what he does. Digs up information that should be left buried and uses it to his advantage. It happened a few years ago. He just turned up on our doorstep, pushed his way through the door and made himself at home. I had a mind to call the guards and have him arrested, but Master wanted to hear what he had to say first. You should have seen his face. It went as white as a sheet. And I was ordered to leave the room. What did he say to him? I have no clue. No one will tell me. But, but ever since then, he can just waltz in whenever he wants and demand anything. If it were up to me, I'd just chuck him out anyway. Who cares if a secret or two gets out? Yeah, that's definitely all wrong. You and Varys. Hmm. I wonder... Does he and Varys? Or does he know Varys is God? Guess I should mention it just in case. Do you... <clears throat> know much about Varys? 
You two seem to get along. That question you perked up a little. Ferris is what I aspire to be. He's such a forward thinker, always on the foreground of the healing arts. He comes up with methods I would never even dream of. I sometimes wonder how he's accumulated so much knowledge. I'd have to live ten of my lives just to know as much as he does. They don't know then. I'll keep quiet. Uh, I didn't realize he considered himself a healer. I was still young when we met, around ten years ago. It was just after I moved to Sid Kaim and Master took me in. We only happened to bump into each other. Purely luck. I was feeling... disillusioned. Lost. I wondered if I'd ever be able to live up to my Master's expectations. Become... half the man he is. I could barely whip up a basic tonic or salve. I thought about running away and giving up. And that's when he found me. Sitting alone in the streets. When I told him, he pointed out what I was doing wrong. They were such obvious mistakes. It's embarrassing. But I'll never be able to thank him enough. I wouldn't be here now without his guidance. <laughs> was he much different then? Hmm. Before. Yeah, I remember. He's always been friendly and kind. I'd even go as far as to call him selfless. But it was like he had these invisible walls all around him, both to keep people out and to stop him from growing too attached to anyone. I thought back to the Varus I knew. <clears throat> Such a warm and comfortable person. His smile reaches his eyes now. As much as it pains me to say it, I think the change came from Ilrun. Those two are inseparable. Won't that just make it hurt all the more when they're forced apart? Huh? Ah, forget it. What's the relationship between Zarn and Hone? Hone was quick to close the store when Zarn came in. Does this happen often? Often might be a little too much, but every now and then. Despite their appearances, they've actually been friends for more years than I can count. Huh. That does seem to be an unlikely friendship. I keep telling him that his chances at making it anything other than a friendship are getting slimmer and slimmer. But he just waves me away. Easily embarrassed, you see. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's like that, is it? He says it's not, but I'm not blind. You mentioned your home. You mentioned your home, right? Where was that? It's a small town down south called Cliffspire. I haven't been back since the fire, but I've heard they rebuilt everything that was burnt down. I'm sorry to hear that. How did it happen? I... I was only young, but... They say that a demon burnt it down as punishment. A lot of people died. I wasn't there in the aftermath, though. I was brought to Sidcan. Gods. I'm sure that whoever... No. Whatever with the fire got what was coming to them. I couldn't hope for anything else. Actually, um... About Elrond... I am actually gonna go ahead and end this episode here. Because I realized it's going on a little long. And we've already had multiple year-long <laughs> videos. So anyway, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I will see you later.